Hey guys, welcome back to my channel, or welcome if you're new. Today is a very exciting video because for the first time in a long time, I'll be transferring some plants from soil to semi-hydro step by step. So let's get right into it. So I went to Lowe's this morning to get some paint swatches and naturally I made my way over to the plant section and they had some pretty good plants there. I only picked up two plants, but I almost left with a few more. I had to really stop myself. But the first plant that I picked up is this beautiful Monstera Peru. And if you've been following me for a while now, I posted a wishlist plants video. I think it was about definitely over a year ago. And this plant was one of my wishlist plants. So when I saw this big, healthy, juicy plant, I had to grab it. Like, look at the beautiful texture on these leaves. I can't even believe it. It's so freaking beautiful. I also did some research on this plant and it's a lot easier than your typical Monstera adansonii or Monstera deliciosa, even though those are some of my fairly easy plants. To learn that this is even easier brings me a lot of joy because I have a lot of plants in here. Like I said, I did get this from Lowe's and it was only $20. Every time I get a new plant from a big box store, I always go on Etsy to see how big of a pot you can get for how much. And it's just crazy how small of a pot you get for the price that I paid for this. So this was definitely a steal. And the second plant I picked up is this Baltic Blue Pothos. Isn't it just so freaking beautiful? This plant is very similar to a Cebu Blue Pothos, but one of the biggest differences I learned is that this plant fenestrates a lot faster, meaning that it gets holes in the leaves a lot faster. And any plant that has fenestrations, I'll take it. It's so beautiful. They both came in the same kind of pot. I think this is a six inch pot. I don't know. But we are going to be rinsing the roots off completely, so we might be potting it into a smaller pot, the same size pot. We'll just have to see. But first, naturally, knowing me, we have to take some propagations. One, for insurance, and two, because I love to transfer water props to semi-hydro as well. So that will be fun in an upcoming video. So we are going to take propagations first, and then we will start removing the soil. The dreaded task. Eyebrow scissors, check. And I want to propagate this Monstera Peru first because it's just so juicy and luscious. <gasps> Oof. Every growth point has a new leaf unfurling, which I hate propagating plants when there's a leaf unfurling, as you know. But we're going to because I need to propagate a piece and watch the roots grow. I think I'm gonna take, how many propagations? I'm gonna propagate this leaf right here, which has this little leaf unfurling at the current moment. And yeah, let's see. Let's take a little snippity snip snap right under the node, just like that. So this is the first cutting. Oh my God, it's so freaking pretty. I cannot wait to have propagations of this. I'm gonna take two though, cause I don't like one binder plants anymore. I try to avoid it. Let's take this one over here. And that is the second cut. So we have these two cuts right here. They both have new, they both have new leaves unfurling. So let's let them callous over until the end of the video. Now we're gonna take some cuttings off my Baltic Blue Pothos. I'm so excited that I have this plant in my collection. I heard about it a few times in the past, especially when I was first getting into plants. And I definitely would have grabbed one if I had seen one, but this is the first time Oh, that was my TV. <laughs> but this is the first time that I've seen one in one of my local big box stores, like Lowe's, so I had to grab it. Let's see, how many cuttings are we gonna take? Let's take this one. Oop, oop. Took, oh. I took one. I don't wanna take them all from the same side because I don't want it to look bald. Oh my God. Okay. So this is the cutting that I took. It has this little leaf down here as well. These leaves are so beautiful. It kind of looks like a Raphidophora. Oh my God, it's literally like a Raphidophora and a Cebu Blue had a baby. 
so gorgeous. I love it. I might have to propagate this leaf down here as a one leafer because it's so far down, like the space right there. So let's just cut that off really quick. And then I'm just gonna pop these into water, but I am gonna let them callus over just because we have other stuff to do in this video, so why not? Now we're gonna get into the hard part, which is removing all of the soil. Not excited to do this. Gloves, so we can be safe. Because who really knows what's in that soil? Not me, and I'm not trying to F around and find out. We got the gloves on. And the first thing I do when I'm removing soil from a plant that I'm going to transfer into semi-hydro is to remove as much of the dirt as I can with my hands and just toss it in the trash. And then I'm gonna rinse off the roots to make sure they're really, really clean before we transfer them into a pot. And I got a bag. Well, I got a few bags. I wanted to do the other one first, but since this one's right here, I guess we'll do the Baltic Blue Potos. And I'm just gonna start by getting the pot off. Oh my God, I'm, I'm really trying not to make a mess because I don't wanna be cleaning up soil. Okay, okay, okay. Mm. Oh my God, not its root bound. Look at this. Jesus Christ. Now I'm just in here getting all the soil off as best as I can. It's very compact because it's so root bound. Tiny roots, thick roots, medium roots, long roots. But it's coming off. It is very compact though, can't lie. I should take this outside to the garden and rinse it off. I think I might, just to make it easier because the sprayer from the sink works, but when you use that hose from the garden, the way the dirt comes off the roots is just crazy. So I'm definitely gonna go do that. That's how much I got off before I go in the garden. Which I'm not taking you guys because every time I try to film in the garden, it's a disaster. Plant number two. I can't get over how pretty this plant is, seriously. Jesus. Oh my God, this one is really wet. Oh, this one came off with brownie mix. Not even brownie mix, like a, a fresh brownie out the oven. <laughs> is that weird? Oh my God, this is a lot. I love when I find multiple plants when I do this. I'm like, yay, maybe I can do two instead of one. Where is this plant tag coming from? Probably so many bugs in my house right now. You guys should be proud of me that I brought fungus gnats in my house for you. Okay, I wanna take this outside. Boop, just put that back in there. I'm gonna clean this up, rinse the roots off, and I'll be right back. That literally took forever, and it was raining outside. I was not prepared for that. But anyways, I got the roots as clean as I possibly could. Here is my Monstera Peru. Ooh, it's a little drippy and the newly cleaned roots. I'm so happy they came that clean. That's why I really wanted to go outside and use the garden hose versus my sink. And then these are the roots on my Baltic Blue Pothos. You really wanna make sure you're getting the roots as clean as you can, especially if you're transferring your plants to get rid of fungus gnats. Also, I found the more soil that you keep on the roots, the more likely your plant is to root rot because it's retaining too much moisture. So I really try to get as much soil off of the roots as I can. With that being said, I've never used a toothbrush to get roots, to get dirt off the roots. We never go that far. But anyways, let's transfer. Who are we gonna transfer first? Let's transfer my new Peru. This plant is so pretty. I wasn't even sure if this was a Peru before I picked it up. I had to go on Google and type in Monstera Peru and I knew this was the plant that I needed. If you've heard me describe my plants in previous videos, you know I love plants that give off that reptilian vibe. And this one definitely checks every box. Like I really can't believe it. So while I was outside cleaning, 
So while I was outside cleaning off the roots, I decided that I wanted to put both of these plants into my self-watering pots, the ones that I showed you in my Amazon Planty haul. I actually transferred one of my Cebu Blue Pothos plants to one of those pots. So I transferred this Cebu Blue Pothos to my self-watering pot about probably three weeks ago now and I haven't seen it decline or get droopy at all so I am very very happy and satisfied with these new pots. And look at how big my Cebu Blue Pothos is getting. If you guys remember, I chopped this plant up completely when I first got it because it was in soil and I didn't want to go through the process of removing the soil because it was tons and tons of vines. So I just cut off all of the foliage, propagated it, and now I have two Cebu Blue Pothos plants that are growing extremely well. I do have them both trailing right now. I don't plan on staking them up, I don't think, but I don't know. Maybe in the future. So with that being said, here is one of the self-watering pots. Comes with a white pot with a water meter right there. And then it comes with one of these pots as well. I showed you in my, I'm not sure what video was that? I showed you in the video where I propagated and staked up my philodendron varicosum, which that plant is also doing so well. The little growth point that I left on the plant is actually producing growth. I'm really struggling with this. There we go. Oh my god, I'm so excited. Okay. Should we do more than one plant for this guy? I don't know. Because there's so many cuttings. Now let's just do, let's just put him in here. This might be too small of a pot, honestly, but... We're gonna put them in there. Most of my regular green Monstera are in LECA and they do extremely well. But I do have all of my Monstera Albo in a pond mixture. So looking at these roots, this plant looks like it would do good in either or. What should we do? Should we do LECA just to be fun? Yeah, let's do LECA. I already cleaned off some LECA and some pond prior to this video just to have it on deck. I don't even know if I have enough LECA to pop this up. Oops, that was too much. Was it too much? Here? So this is how big the pot actually is. So now I'm second guessing it. Like this is a bit, yeah, I don't think I'm gonna do that guys. You know what I'm gonna do instead? I already told you guys I was gonna do this in a previous video, which is just to use this pot. And use a one third of the way reservoir. That is how I pot up a lot of my semi-hydro plants. My entire collection is semi-hydro, by the way. Why is it so dark? So we're not going to use this pot that goes inside. We're just gonna use the cover pot. Is that good or should we do some more like good down there? So I filled this pot up about that much and I'm just going to take the plant how it is and just plop it down like that. And then I'm just going to stand up to backfill it so I can see what's going on in there. Kind of get the leaves out the way so none of them get squished below. I'm using a plastic scooper. If you know, you know. Yeah, I don't think I have enough LECA. I don't, but it's okay because I have a lot of pond. And that's it. I mean, there's a few more pieces in there, but it's not enough to fill the pot, so whatever. And then we have all of this pond right here. DIY pond, Lechuza pond, it's all in here. So we're just gonna start dumping. I do mix my substrates quite often. Um, I never do like half and half. It usually ends up being because I don't have any more of one of the substrates. Like right now, I don't have any more LECA, so I'm using Pond to fill the rest of the pot, and I've never had a problem with that. If you guys watched my video where I chopped up and staked my Philodendron Varicosum, I did that to that plant as well, and it's actually growing quite nicely. So let's just fill the rest of the pot. Oh 
Oh my god, I just almost dropped all of this on the floor. I would have been so upset. Oh, it's stuck. There we go. Now we're just gonna maneuver, maneuver, and give it a little shake so there's no air pockets. And bam. Look at how gorgeous this is. Wow, let me go get some water. I do use Dynagro on all of my plants because some plants don't have the Osmo coat, so I'm just trying to see how much water's in there. I can definitely fill it past the water meter because it's so low, so I can fill it to about here. So that's what I'm gonna do. And I also like to turn the pot just to make sure I'm getting all of the roots wet. There we go. And this is my, let me get this out of here. And this is my newly potted up Monstera Peru. I am so excited to watch this plant grow in my collection, yay. Okay, moving on to my Baltic Blue Pothos. It is so gorgeous, oh my God. I have a really suspicious feeling that this plant is gonna grow like crazy and I can't wait to see it. So I am gonna use another self-watering pot as well. I will link these down below because they are the most practical that I've found and you can get a bunch for a low price. I did get them on Amazon. And this, for this plant we are going to be fulling, fulling. For this plant we are going to be filling, for this plant we are going to be filling up the pot completely with pawn. So you guys can tell me if you see a difference between the pawn and like a mixture or not. Because I haven't, honestly. I forgot to rinse the leaves on this plant. Did I? Oh, I don't really want to go do that. I'm not fed up though. So, okay, anyways. Oh no, that's, that's way too much. I filled it. What is that? Piece of plastic? So I filled it about there, it's like that much in there. And like the other one, I'm just going to stick, oh, he needs a bigger pot. He really does. But I don't think I have any bigger pots. I don't. I really don't have any bigger pots. So should we separate this guy? Oh my God, he's wicked stuck. There we go. I'm gonna separate him because he would literally suffocate in this pot, so I definitely wanted to separate that, which is okay to do. No roots were damaged. And now I'm just gonna backfill. Gotta get the other side. what that one's looking like Ooh. very pretty gonna water it I've honestly just been trying to clean up my collection and get it organized because when you have a lot of plants it can get out of hand quick a lot of plants a lot of propagations and plants that need to get potted up that are losing leaves because they're suffocating in their pots it's a lot but here I am buying more plants. But I did clean up a lot of my plants. I got rid of a lot of dead propagations. Um, and I repotted a couple of plants as well as you saw with my Cebu Blue. Now we have to find a pot for this guy. His roots aren't that big. Let me go find something and I'll be right back. 12 seconds later. When I pop on, it gets scary like a cemetery. Okay, I'm gonna use this dirty ass pot. But it's okay. 
And this is what the roots look like compared to the pot. It's gonna have to be repotted soon, but I don't have that many big pots, so we're gonna have to wait on that. But in the meantime, I'm sure it will be fine because it's not like it's gonna be busting out the pot or anything, so should be good. Oh my God, no, are you kidding me? Bruh, I don't have enough pond to pot this guy. Oh no. I'm trying to think if I have any more pond, but I really don't. So you know what I'm gonna do instead? What am I gonna do instead? I don't know. So my options are to propagate this. Should I just put it in water until I get more? I used to do that a lot. When I first got into plants, I always used to stick plants in water until I got some more LECA. So I'm gonna do that with this one. I'm gonna stick him in some water. Let's go find a vessel for that. So I found this vase right here that I'm gonna put these in. Let's try to get them in here first. Twist them up like a little twisty. Boop. Bam, just like that. A vase full of potos. And the only reason why I'm doing this is because my mom's golden pothos has been living in water for years and thriving. And I also have a few plants that are thriving in water as well. One being my Hartley philodendron. That plant... That plant was dying when I transferred it to Lekka. So I ended up propagating it and leaving it in water. I honestly just never got around to potting it up. I almost did a few times, but it just looks so good in water that I can't disturb it. So we'll see how this guy does in water versus being in a medium. And I'll keep you guys updated. So now we are going to add rooting hormone to the propagations we took earlier and stick them into this cute little vessel that I made in a previous video as well. It's my favorite little vessel. Boop. And we're using my Clone X gel because this shit lasts forever. I remember when I first got into plants, they said to use cinnamon as rooting hormone, but no. I just like to dip them in and then stick it into the vessel. Oh my God, so pretty. I'm propagating all of these together because I heard that pothos, I don't know if it's just golden pothos, but I heard that pothos have like a magic chemical in them that allows other plants to root a lot easier. How cute is this? And I'm very superstitious, so once I hear something like that, it sticks in my head. So I'm hoping that the Baltic Blue will have the same effect as my golden pothos and help my Monstera Peru root faster. I'll keep you guys updated on that as well. But that does bring me to the end of today's video. Give me a thumbs up if you did enjoy. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already. Follow me on my Mother of Plants Instagram. And until my next video, 